In this video, I'm going to be using some unique lighting techniques, including UV IVF photography, to shoot some hellebore flowers. You guys can go and grab some flowers of your own and follow along. So I'm going to go and get started, and I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome to another macro photography tutorial. Today we're shooting some flowers, some hellebore flowers to be specific. It started to get a lot warmer uh, and a lot brighter in the evenings, so flowers have started to bloom, and Sam has given me one of these hellebore flowers out of his garden, and they're really beautiful, so I think they're going to make a really good macro photography subject. They've got some great colours on the petals, and a lot of interesting uh, textures and patterns going on. I'm going to jump right in, get my flower out, get my uh, lighting and my camera ready, and uh, you can follow along with any flowers that you have at home. The hellebores that I've got, uh, they were actually picked a few days ago, so uh, they've started to uh, wilt a little bit, they've gone a little bit droopy. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is take a look and pick uh, some of the better ones. Some of them haven't actually uh, bloomed yet, so uh, we might have uh, a few different stages of uh, of blooming to, uh, to capture over the next couple of days. Um, but I'm going to pick uh, one of the better ones for now and just snip it off at the top, and then I'm going to uh, clamp it in a position where we can get some really good angles and uh, get our lighting in position without the flower facing downwards the whole time. Now that I have my hellebore set up in a little clamp here, it means that I can move my subject around really easily, find different positions and angles uh, without having to uh, get my camera or tripod into such an awkward position, um, but it means that I can uh, maybe look down from the top or from the side um, very, very easily with just uh, a very simple manipulation of this little clamp. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. You can go freehand with your camera and uh, move all the way around. Today I'm going to be shooting uh, mostly on a tripod, simply so that I have my hands free to uh, talk to you guys, but also to manipulate my lighting, which is going to be a big factor in these images. The light that I'm going to be bringing in is of course coming from the Adapter Look Studio. And I have that here on uh, my mini tripod. I've got the legs extended here so that we've got quite a lot of height and we can bring some lighting arms around the front of the flower, but also around the back. Because one of the first things that I want to try is to actually shine the light through these petals. I've had a, a bit of success with that in the past, uh, not only with our leaf shots, but also with some flowers as well. And because these petals are quite thin, I think that we can get some really cool effects of maybe the light coming from inside uh, the flower, or maybe uh, getting some extra detail and colour out of these petals as the light shines through. So the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is just plug in uh, a white lighting arm to begin with, um, and bring that around the front of my flower. Now, as you can see there, we're getting uh, some quite harsh shadows, so I can actually just pop uh, a diffuser on the front of here as well and move that a little bit out of the way uh, so that it's not in my frame. I then have a second white lighting arm, and I'm going to try and bring this one in from the back of the flower. Uh, now, it's important to try and hide the lighting arm behind uh, your subject here, but you can see already that we're getting quite a nice glow from uh, just shining some light on the back of the flower and the back of those leaves. If I just um, change my exposure a little bit, you can see that that's going to turn out uh, really, really nice with those coloured effects shining through the back of the flower and the, uh, the leaf as well. Now at this point with my uh, one diffuser on here and then my second lighting arm shining in from the back, I think it's worth just moving our lighting around and seeing what uh, that actually changes in this scene because it's quite a complex setup with that position of the light in the back really affecting how um, this whole shot looks. So moving maybe only that back lighting arm around, moving both lighting arms by uh, uh, moving our entire lighting setup, it's really worth experimenting where that light is going to get placed in your scene. Uh, of course, you can also experiment with taking off the uh, the diffuser and getting a little bit more harsh light on the front there, uh, but I think I prefer it with the diffused light on the front and then the undiffused light getting the raw power shining straight through uh, the flower. 
I'm going to try a couple more shots just using this method, getting a couple of different angles and some uh, different angles of the lighting coming in and see what we can actually do with this. I'm really enjoying this method of lighting our flower. Using that white lighting arm coming from the back to give it a little bit of a glow inside the flower, I think is a, is a really cool and interesting technique that gives it a little bit more visual interest in the image. It's almost like the flower is glowing from the inside. Of course, we still need that main diffused white light because uh, just the light coming from the inside of the flower leaves all of the detail um, in the dark, in shadow, because there's no light shining on the front. So you need that light at the front, but adding uh, an extra bright, interesting light shining through the petals or through the leaf uh, can really add to the effect as well. Next up, I want to try a different flower. Now this is a bud that has uh, barely opened up. And uh, because of that, we've got some very, very uh, pristine shapes and patterns on the inside of here. I just want to pop this into my clamp and see if I can't use that same technique of lighting through the petals to get a good shot of the inside of this flower just as it's opening up. For the shot of the closed up smaller flower, I've tried quite a few different setups, uh, moving my lighting around in the back of the flower and shining it through from the sides. Um, and I think I've settled on this setup here. So it's a variation on what we've already done with a single white lighting arm coming around the front with a diffuser on it so that isn't, we're not getting any uh, harsh shadows shining on the front of those petals. Uh, next, we've got uh, another lighting arm coming around to the bottom side, so that's shining down here. And you can see, uh, if I hit record here, you'll see that as I remove that light, that bottom side of the, uh, the flower loses that shine coming through the inside. Uh, but that's sort of left it a little bit unbalanced. So I've got another lighting arm coming in here uh, up on the top. Um, now, with these three lighting arms together, it's created sort of a balance. We've got some nice light coming in from the front, we've got light coming in from the top and also from the bottom. The trick with something like this is that your exposure is going to be much, much higher on the outside of the flower. So if you're trying to out expose for the outside of the flower, uh, the inside is going to be underexposed and vice versa. Uh, the trick to changing this is manipulating the brightness of each of your lighting arms. So we can do that uh, using the mobile app. You can connect via Bluetooth to um, the control pod here, or we can just do it manually. And you'll see as I press uh, the top button, one of my lighting arms will start to flash. That's the one that I'm controlling. So if I go ahead and choose uh, this, well, let's see it without any light coming in from the front. Uh, I then just have to hold the, uh, the plus or the minus button and slowly that light will change. Now we have no light coming from the front, that flashing means that it's at minimum. So if I just let go, it's going to uh, save that profile and then we have a different balance of light. And you can do this for each of your three lighting arms to make sure that you're getting the right balance of light on the inside and the outside of your flower. I think this style of shining light through uh, organic material is really magnificent. We've done a lot of it in the past, shooting leaves and dried leaves, um, but shining uh, light through petals and flowers uh, can really take it to the next level, bringing out those colors, the detail, and even the structure of the plant uh, with veins and, and cells, if you can get close enough. It's almost as if the, uh, the light is emanating from the flower itself, which of course it's not, it's just shining in through the back. We do, however, have uh, a way of making the light emanate from the plant itself, and that's using UV IVF photography. Now, if you don't know anything about UV IVF, I do recommend going and watching our explainer videos first, which uh, I'll link up in the top right hand corner now. That goes through everything that you're going to need to know in order to get started with UV IVF photography. It's not as complicated as you might think. You don't need any camera modifications or extra filters. It's all about the light source. So I'm going to grab our UV lighting arms, which will be our light source for today, and I'll set up a UV shot so that you can see exactly how to do it. 
The difference between a UV IVF setup and a regular setup is not that great. We're still going to need our camera on a tripod because we'll be doing a long exposure, but also we'll need our subject to be quite stable as well because we don't want any movement or camera shake while we're taking our shot. The main difference comes in our lighting. The setup that I've got here is two UV lighting arms, and you can tell that they're UV lighting arms not only because they have a purple connector, but also because they don't actually create any light. So this UV uh, lighting arm is turned on, but because uh, it's quite bright in here and I'm not very fluorescent, you can't see uh, any actual visible light coming from uh, my hand there or the flower at the moment. So it's going to be very important to get darkness. I'm going to be turning out all of my lights and getting it as pitch black in my room as possible so that uh, the fluorescence created by the flower is the brightest thing around. You're not going to be able to follow along once I turn out the lights, so I'll very quickly tell you what I'm about to do and then I'll give you some before and after shots that I've taken in the dark. Firstly, you need to set up your camera, your lighting, your subject and your composition while the lights are still on, just so that you can see what you're doing. You also need to uh, focus your camera and if your lens has an autofocus mode, you need to flip it over to manual, otherwise your camera might try and refocus in the dark and it'll mess up all of your focus settings that you've uh, made in the light. Once you have all of that done, you can uh, turn out the main lights and take a long exposure. You want to keep your ISO as low as possible and your aperture can be uh, whichever aperture you'd like for the depth of field that you'd like to go for. You then uh, get the correct exposure by manipulating your shutter speed. So uh, we're probably going for quite a long shutter speed of 20 to 30 seconds. Once you've done that, you should have a really nice uh, UV IVF shot pop up on the back of your camera, which is the best part because sometimes you can't even see the subject fluorescing with your own eyes, even in the pitch darkness. So I'm going to go and turn out the lights now and see what these hellebores actually look like under two UV lighting arms. I've really enjoyed shooting these flowers today. Hellebores make for a really nice macro photography subject. They've got a lot of color and they've got those nice patterns on the insides of the leaves that you can uh, focus in on. Even if the flower isn't fully open yet, like mine today, you can use the techniques like I did, uh, shining light through the outside of the flower and into the, uh, the, the inside to get a really visually interesting image. If you have access to some UV lighting arms, you can again use some uh, UV IVF techniques to get that otherworldly look. And the hellebores, uh, they're really, really fluorescent, so it's a great starter subject if you wanted to try out your new UV lighting arms. Leave me a comment below letting me know which of these two techniques you prefer, the more conventional white light shining through the outside of the flower or the UV IVF techniques where you get those interesting otherworldly colors. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like whilst you're down there and don't forget to subscribe for more flower photography and macro photography ideas and inspiration in the future. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.